up thank you for being here um i mean that you know yeah thank you thank you how are your parents i hope they're okay something bad didn't just happen and then you're like yeah not why i was want to listen or watch a podcast uh, it's to get that hashed up my mom just got hit by a mac truck i hope that's not the case and if it is the case sue please i know the guys that were in um in the in the car accident with tracy morgan comedian tracy morgan got in a car accident I know one of the guys, Artie Fuqua. Actually, I know all the guys. Not bragging. But Artie was, he was doing a joke about how he's in the bed basically like paralyzed. And he overhears someone mention it was a Walmart truck. And he pops up like, did you say Walmart? So hopefully no one got hit by a truck. And yeah, do I know how to start a conversation or do I know how to start a conversation? Here's the thing. I'm sloppy. I have bad manners. I have really bad manners. And I I did some deep dives into the history of manners. And and I talked to my friend Henry Foley, who's a comedian and actor in New York, about manners, how to do them. You know, left to my own devices, I'd be like, okay, what fork what fork is, do I use to pull the ice out of the the glass? Uh, just bad manners. A, a piece of bread isn't a piece of bread. It's the it's a squishy fork. You know. Salt all in the hand, then psh, onto the table. Snort that shit up. You know, I have snorted salt before. I was always the kid willing to try new things. Holler. So, yeah, I got bad fucking manners. And I looked up, like, the history of manners to be like, what the hell's going on? But before I get into the history of manners... I also, I wanted, I had said that I was going to tell you guys a story about me coming out. Why did I say that I was going to do that? No one asked to hear it. This is very self-indulgent of me, but no one asked to hear it, but I want to share it because, because it's humorous. And I have to do a college tonight where I do an hour of material, okay, over Zoom. An hour of material. I haven't done comedy in a month, you know? It's interesting, too, how triggering comedy is for me because, like, that high, that rush of performing makes me want to drink. And I don't know if that's, like, just the nerves. And you want to have nerves. Nerves mean you care about something. But it's definitely – we'll be, I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. But, yeah, just basically before I get to the, before I get to the manner stuff, I, I want to tell you about me coming out to my mom. And you can ask me anything about coming out stuff. You can ask me anything about sex stuff. Emma's Bunker at gmail.com. Okay, so my mom had cancer, and I didn't grow up with my mom. I grew up with my dad. So I grew up with my dad, my sister grew up with her mom, and our brother grew up with his mom. And my mom and I were not close at all. And then she had cancer. We re-became close in college. I just got my first girlfriend. And, and also to set the scene, my mom is like, she's really like progressive, but uptight. Like she grew up in a very like, traditional New England type family but then she like went to Berkeley college in in uh, California in Berkeley California and she like 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 okay did you see that movie Blow with Johnny Depp I think that's what it's called so in it they're like Berkeley California in the 69 and when I, I watched it with my sister and I'm like wasn't mom at Berkeley California 69 yes she was she was like hell yeah I think I was whoop whoop I added the whoop whoop she doesn't really sound like Marge Simpson but it's how she feels you know what I mean when people first meet my mom, they're like, she doesn't sound like your your impression. And then they spend 10 minutes with her and they're like, ah, but it's how she feels. Better believe it. Better believe it. End of a one hour conversation with her. They're like, and then Susan, my mom was like, meh, meh. so, so my mom and I go to a silent yoga retreat and, and she's taking this shit serious. Okay. She's like silent yoga. And you eat your meals at silent dinner, silent lunch, silent breakfast. The place is called Kripalu. I don't know if it's silent all the time. Maybe it wasn't even supposed to be silent. Maybe that's how she was just getting me to shut the fuck up. Because you know I'm a talker. So, so we go to this silent yoga retreat. And, and she's like into it. And we were supposed to, you're supposed to stay in like communal rooms. But my mom was like, well, we're not going to do that. Because I want to make sure we can have lemon cookies. Lemon cookies. Lemon cookies. So we had our own room because my mom wanted lemon cookies. 
Can you believe that? That's my fucking mom right there. We can't stay with everybody because did she not want to share the cookies or was she nervous about being judged for the cookies? I don't know. I don't know. And I don't care. All I know is fucking thank God for those lemon cookies. What's up? Gotta get we have to have my lemon cookies. Let me know what kind of cookie you if you if you only could have one cookie for one week, what kind of cookie what kind of cookie would you sneak into the yoga retreat? Because think about this. Also, you're doing a bunch of yoga, so you're not gonna wanna have like a super heavy cookie. Or are you? Because then you know you're gonna be you could have as many as you want because you're being healthy in other regards. I don't know, I don't know. I think I would have a double stuffed Oreo. <gasps> yeah, baby. So can I have lemon cookies. And we would talk at night, but during the day, got to be quiet. So silent lunch comes around. I'm in college. And I had been like, I'd pump myself up. I'm like, all right, I'm going to come out to my mom. You know what I'm saying? And we're at silent lunch. And I go, hey, mom. She goes, it's silent lunch. And I was like, I got to tell you something. She goes, silent lunch. And I was like, it's important. She goes, silent lunch. And I was like, since I've been in college, college, I've been dating women. She goes, what? I'm like, can we get her out of here? Silent lunch. She's disrupting the monks. Can we please, please get this one, get this woman out of here? She's like, you little asshole. So that's how I came out to my mom, and she was shocked, which was shocking to me. I'm like, you're shocked about this? You're shocked about this? But then, since then, she's been very, very supportive. Not supportive of me pursuing a career in entertainment. I remember after I did Colbert the first time, I was really depressed about career stuff, and I was in a Dwayne Reed in Brooklyn, and I remember just being like, I just kept getting rejected from things, and my mom was like. Well, if you stop now, because you did Colbert, everyone would know you tried. And I just sat down in that Dwayne Reed like, damn, she's right. But I was like, I know I can do this. I know I can do this. But I remember that. I was like, damn, everyone would know you tried. Why? I'm so glad my mom is taking Corona seriously. She really is now. Now she really is. But in the beginning, not so much. In the beginning, she was making phone calls like, I was at the bookstore. And guess what? It was weird. People aren't respecting social distancing because other people were there. And I'm like, yeah, including you. You, you was there. That's like if you were like, I was just licking the seat on the subway, just, you know, as you do, just licking it and licking it and licking it and licking it and licking it. And I looked over and some other person was licking the seat on the subway. What a psycho. They're nuts. These people are crazy. These seat licking people. How tough would someone's immune system be if they're licking the fucking one lick on the New York City subway? Either you, either you die or... You live forever. Them's the rules. My mom's like really like progressive, but like, yeah, she's like uptight. She accidentally ate a pot brownie one time. Bitching about the brownie. She's like, ah, you didn't do that brownie right. You did the brownie wrong. Next day, brownie was wrong. Next day, brownie was wrong. Next day, I don't know what you did to that brownie, but it wasn't right. Next day, Emma made a brownie, but it wasn't the right kind. It was no, no good. Tasted funny. So finally I was like, it tasted funny because there was marijuana in it. And she went, I know that, but you didn't sift the flour. (laughs) If you had asked me, I would have told you what you did wrong. I wish I had some pot before this fucking college show. God, Jesus, Lord. I have to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. I wanted to tell you guys about this dream I had. I alluded to it in the last one. And I'm so interested in dreams. I've been having all kinds of weird dreams from, from, you know, being in the bunker. But a while ago, before all this happened, I had a dream where I jerked off my dog. It was a cartoon, but I, but I was, like, disturbed by it. Also, sometimes it sounds like I have to burp. I'm just bad with my voice sometimes. Like, like I suck at whispering. Every time I whisper, 100% of the time, people respond by going, are you okay? And I go, oh, yeah, I'm trying to whisper. And they go, oh, it sounds like there's something wrong with your voice. I'm like, no, I'm whispering. And they're like, you, you're still being loud. You're supposed to whisper. But I, w- I was probably like, that's just too much force behind it. <laughs> Not going on the resume whispering skills, that's for sure. <laughs> it's so good to see your face. It's good to see you, my friend. Can you uh, believe this? It's goofy. You want to hear something weird? Yeah. Um, I, w- th- I swear on my niece, this sounds really weird. But like, I, I mean, I feel weird telling you this. I was so like, so excited to, I don't know. I was like so excited to see your face. I had like a hard time sleeping. What? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just, just see We got to get you out of the fucking know. house. <laughs> yeah. If you're waiting to look at this, you're in trouble. Where are you? Uh, I'm in fucking Astoria, Queens, right in the heart of it, baby. So you're not going to go to Philly? 
uh, we were debating it, but we don't want to go go to my parents and kill them. Right. There's that. Yeah. Um, and we've been out enough, like to the grocery store or, you know, don't doing this. Or- don't groceries go quick? Because I'm so used to eating out regularly that now when I'm going to the gro when I'm making three meals at home, I'm like, oh, I I burned through this food fast. Three. I'm eating like fucking every 25 <laughs> minutes. I'm out. I'm what? at the stove. It's bad, man. It's oh wait, bad. this is part of what I was thinking about. Okay, Foley and I have a mutual friend, Mike. And Mike told me this story about him and Foley were helping someone move. Good guys. Mm-hmm. And Foley had to go get a hamburger and he wanted to get a walking around burger. And he tried to slip it in like that was just the thing. He goes, oh, I didn't need one to eat and then I need one for walking around. You know, a walking around burger. Very funny. Very funny. Was that yeah. for real? Or was Mike just making a joke? I like to have something in my pocket just in case. You know, some something like this happens. Next thing you know, I'm sitting pretty with a couple McDoubles on me. Yeah, he's like, I, well, I put donuts in my pocket the other night. And because I didn't want my girlfriend to see how many I was eating. And then <laughs> oh my God. I had to take one. She just to even be like, you're getting it. I was in the bed eating them. She goes, just get stop. And then I grabbed her hand and said, I'll fight you. And she was like, all right, Emma. So yeah, that- I think there's too much of that going on during this. There's too much. Uh, we're all doing bad things as far as like, you know, eating the wrong way, et cetera, right. et cetera. And then what will happen is, is you'll make a move. And then the significant other will give you shit about that. And then a half hour later, they're making a move. And you're like, well, since she gave me shit, I'm going to give, you know what I mean? Right. And it's just, it's just this cycle. A constant That's why back and forth. It's very important for couples that are quarantined together to stay on the same eating regimen. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? No, I didn't even think about that. Tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. Because, all right, say you get up. All right, you're hungry. You make something. And then a half hour later, they get up. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, well, you're not on the same schedule. And that's just going to start causing problems. Why? Next thing you know, you're in the kitchen fighting over a Pop-Tart. Who sets the schedule? You or your girl, though? I mean, you just got to be in it together. Are you guys Are you guys bickering at all? No, not really at all. Not not at all. We're actually, uh, you know, we've been doing some walks together. We've that's been, great. Uh, yeah, having some laughs in the grocery store together, laughing at the absurdity of all of it. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's kind of all you can do almost. Yeah, and we're right here. We're right here in the center. So we were thinking if, um, you know, I guess if it goes through May, maybe at the end of April, you know, head down there. But it's also a gamble because, you know, I, I can't, we can't not be inside. Right. We can't be inside for two weeks straight, not near anybody. Right. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to say with certainty that, you know, hey, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't have it in me and I'm going to go home and fucking, you know, waste my mom and dad, which I don't want to do. Right. But I'll tell you yeah. what, especially, you know, if it's the month of May, the pool's open down there. We got the, the neighborhood. It's clean living down there in the well, you, you, you Would you be able to do the pool and that wouldn't be social gathering? I mean, not if you're just in there, but, you know, two or three people. Yeah, that does sound pretty nice. Because I already asked my mom, I was like, you're going to open the pool on schedule. She's like, well, <laughs> I already paid for it. They're supposed to come. But so I you're like, cool. I'll risk your life when that pool's open. Yeah, if the, if the pool's open and the garage fridge is stocked with Capri Suns, you start oh, you start taking oh, gambles. Oh my God! If I but I don't know. The Capri biggest thing Sun. I can't see us sitting in here for another month. We'll you know we'll go crazy. Part of me is kind of uh, yeah. I'm almost scared when it ends because I'm I'm not I'm gonna forget how to interact with people again. I actually have a college tonight. I haven't done any comedy in a month. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do a college tonight, and I'm supposed to do an hour at the school of, of comedy. Wait, but you're doing it? I said I would do it because they said they'd pay me the same rate that they were going to pay me. I mean, I'd do it for any amount of money, to be totally honest. This is going to come out after I've done it, so surprise to them. But, <laughs> but, they, said that they, but they said that they were going to pay me the same amount that they were going to pay. And I would have had to – it was a show way in upstate New York, so I would have had to – fly from LA to New York, New York to upstate, and then drive three hours. So I'm saving two days of travel by doing it on Zoom, but I haven't done comedy on Zoom. Oh, that's what you're doing. You're doing it on Zoom. Okay, yeah. now, now I got you. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it on Zoom. Man, that's going to be tough. An hour. And imagine it doesn't, imagine it starts not going well 20 minutes in. And Start everyone's rushing just, through material. 
burning that I material I haven't done material that I don't it's not relevant right now all the stuff I talk about I mean it's not like I don't know I'm gonna start with some of your jokes no I'm telling you there was uh I, I was I was still in the fight like right up until the end like uh, were you going out right up into it I was going out right up until that the, the clubs were like you know what we're pulling the plug like that night I was supposed to have a show really uh, at Fort at New York Comedy Club on Fourth Street, and they were like, "Hey, we're not waiting. We're gonna we're gonna shut this down just to play it safe." That would have been my that would have been my last show. But all that weekend, I was working, and I remember at like one point on like Saturday mm. at like the ten o'clock show, I came off stage and I'm like, you know, just like the energy in the room, you could tell there was like this thing coming, right? And like the people that were out were like trying to ignore it. They were trying to have one last good time and. But, you know, everybody had to kind of talk about it a little bit. But I remember coming off stage at one point and just being like, what the fuck am I talking about? Like, yeah, it, 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 it's so irrelevant. You know right. what I mean? It's, it's like, and I feel like when we go back, like I've been just working on new stuff. And Have you? Yeah. I mean, That's just like, great. I haven't written to... one thing. I've been taking an acting class, but I haven't written one joke. What else? Well, just, just like trying to figure out, you know, in the interim, like how to approach it, like how to go about, because I can't get that hey, fat guy. Man, man, man. It's going to have to be related to this because this isn't going to be just like all of a sudden Friday you could night. Be like, you should have seen me before Corona. I was, <laughs> I was 100 pounds. <laughs> like, well, okay. So I want to ask you about etiquette, but I also, okay. actually I want to just before we do the etiquette, I know you got, I wanted to ask too, it just popped in my head. What were you like as a kid? Were you, like, what, what were you like? Did, have you always been like how you are now, or did you? Like, what were you like as a kid? Yeah, I was it's the same way I was, the same way I am now. You know, the funny little fat guy. But everybody was funny. You know what I mean? So it, it, it you know, my parents were funny. My brother was funny. His friends were all funny. All my friends were funny. Are you guys funny. Italian? What are you guys? Irish. Irish. Okay. But I mean, with the with the fucking what's it called? Twenty three and me. I don't know. My brother did it. We got a couple things. You guys did in. that. My brother did. I'm not doing it. I don't want to know. I tell you, my mom, my mom did it and found out a couple of things she probably didn't want to know. Yeah, because you find out you got a cousin, you got a fucking. You, I mean, maybe I'd want it. Did you? I, I wouldn't. I don't want to know about new siblings. I don't think. Yeah, she found out she. We, we have a little. We have a little Italian in us. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. But I think the way that we have it in us is a little scandalous for the nineteen fifties. Uh, family lifestyle they like if you get my drift they rape somebody no what <laughs> my mom <laughs> I don't know what, what is this the fucking still? first 48 no <laughs> i got you foley this is, inter <laughs> this is inter intervention <laughs> they're doing crime in a whole new way they're digging up old cold case rapes yeah there might have been a couple of scandalous affairs going oh on. that makes a lot yeah. more sense. fuck man you know what the problem is i'm watching too much true crime Mm -hmm. wouldn't i wouldn't have even thought of fair now my mind's going right to, right there's, there's yeah who'd you murder <laughs> yeah. okay. affairs okay who'd you throw down the stairs foley huh they killed them all of them wow <laughs> your mom seems like such a sweet lady <laughs> oh god so yeah you, you were a funny little kid yeah you know but like i said everybody was you know everybody was funny did you, you do know? well in school what no academically academically <laughs> metaphysically no i did not were you do in, well were you in special ed no jesus oh, I christ i was i was in special ed me well, I mean, and our I buddy took, mike cross I, I took a couple of classes yeah i guess i guess at some points i was the truth you know? comes out yeah once i think somewhere around like uh 10th grade they started doing a couple of tests on me. You know what I mean? A couple yeah, of electrodes. Ain't right. Yeah, <laughs> get this one down to the lab. Yeah, get something cold. quick. You want well, one of these hamburgers in my pocket? You know what's weird too is that I I'm nearsighted, so I couldn't see the fucking blackboard until like sixth uh, grade. It wasn't until sixth grade where my mom they were finally like, well, let's go get him get his eyes examined or, or whatever. It was when I got I got didn't get glasses till sixth grade, and I remember putting the glasses on for the first time and being like. What the fuck? This is right. what you guys all see. This is insane. You're looking at your girlfriend like, oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So then I think in maybe like my sophomore year of high school, they realized, you know, a little ADHD, a little yeah, something, a little too. that. So I did take a couple of classes down in what we called I Hall. That was, was the name of the hall. That was the official name. That yeah, I Hall. But was everybody where, knew. Yeah, that was that was where if you were taking classes down there. 
You weren't going to be going for your doctorate anywhere. I don't know why soon. I did quotes. Everybody knew. I don't know. I'm, I've been misused. <laughs> Everybody knew. That. That's where they kept the murderers and the, and the scoundrels was down there. So I had, I think I had made a post a while ago. I think it was me. Cause this is the thing. My messy manners have come up more and more in the, like I'd say last three years, I've been eating the same way forever. This, mm-hmm. I remember in college, I had a girlfriend who made a couple comments or whatever. And I was like, this is how it is. Cause I eat my hands. And I posted, I said, can someone teach me etiquette? And I had responses from, um, I think like five different women that I went to this like expensive summer program for dyslexic kids mm-hmm. where they were all like, Oh, I, I know etiquette. I know this and that. And then the other person who responded was, Foley, who was like, I know about um, utensils and all that from working in fine oh, dining. Oh, that's what you mean. I was just scratching my neck with a pen. <laughs> so you're asking me about etiquette. I'm like, what? Oh, I said, this is the guy. But even just the basics, because, okay. Those kind of things, yes. I know a little bit about them. Yeah. Because this is, I guess I knew, I just don't like fucking using, thank God I'm not a penis man because I would never wear a condom because I don't like using utensils because I feel like it restricts me from the food. What about like eating like steak or something like that? Give it You're eating me. steak with your hand? Yeah. At a restaurant? Not at a restaurant. Oh my God. That's like something from There Will Be Blood. <laughs> but, but it does, you don't do that in the private of your own home? In the privacy of my own home. Yeah. You know, somebody asked me, I was on the road with somebody. I was on the road with Michael Costa. All right. Yeah. We were driving oh, yeah, funny back. Guy. Super funny guy. We were driving back from Delaware together. And this was like the first time I was able to really articulate it. He goes, because we stopped at McDonald's Mm -hmm. and he goes, what do you normally order? Okay. And my initial response, my initial response, exactly. My initial response was, it depends who I'm with and if I'm alone. So if you ask me what I do in the privacy of my own home, uh, yeah, I'm fucking eating like an animal. But (laughs) I did, I did work in fine dining for a lot of years, uh, waiting tables. So Wait, so I what do, did you answer to Michael? What did you say you ordered if you're alone, if you're with people? <laughs> you should have saw the look on his face. He's like, I didn't mean to ask that type of question. I just wanted I to like, know what kind I, of fries you like. If I'm alone, I'm looking at like two or three sandwiches. And yeah. there's always adjustments to the sandwiches because I want to know that they're just making it right now. Because if you just order straight off the menu, they're going ha- to have whatever's ready. It Whoa. could have been sitting there for a while. So I make a little tweak. No pickles, extra onions, no ketchup, no, you know, so- something. Just something to keep them on their toes. Be bop and scat a little <laughs> bit. You know what I mean? A filet of fish with a little Big Mac sauce. Something like that. They don't see coming. Throw them a curveball. So then you know that's some fresh, some fresh fast food. <laughs> Dude, it's so bad. Okay, so what, so what, if you'd give me some pointers on how the fuck I'm supposed to act like I know how, how, how to have good manners, because I know about, and this is the thing, like I went to nice restaurants as a kid, but okay, mm-hmm. so you got the forks, so they get, it goes little fork salad, and then what's, what's, the, what's going on with this? I mean, those things are starting to become a little antiquated as far as- you think? Uh, Yeah, I mean, there's not, there's not you know, that, that sort of fine dining is somewhat dying out a little bit. Good. But- it would, it would go, I mean, a real classy joint, okay, they would have the cutlery on the table, but then, like, say you started off with a salad course, they would bring you a chilled fork. Okay, I have had that before. Why yeah. chilled? Why chilled? Because it's a cold salad. Oh. Yeah, cold salads, you shouldn't, like, you know how, like, to have, sometimes when a restaurant's busy, you'll get a plate, and the plate will still be warm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, a big no-no as far as, like, actual you know the, the the way to dine but if they if give having, you a cold if you're having a salad it should be on a chilled plate and if so they do that then why don't they give you like a heated spoon for your for your soup <laughs> i don't know that's pretty <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah that makes i got you on that. i want the i want the utensil to i remember i remember um visiting you at that restaurant you were helping me with an audition remember that you were working at some like little bistro or something yeah that was snack taverna over on uh bedford and morton in the in the in the uh, in the West Village, that the guy that owns that, he had like a really hardcore. Um, he, he like you know Breaking ran down. like no, he ran like really expensive like fancy hotels and mm. like really expensive fancy restaurants. He was like my finishing school as far as like all that kind of stuff. It was like right before I got out of the business is when I really learned like the most. Like even though that place was like that, it was just like a little a little neighborhood bistro. That was cute. Did, yeah, it was very cute. The food was killer. He did everything 
by like um, fine dining standards. Like we had mise en place plates and What's all that? that kind of stuff. It's when you have, well, mise en place is French for everything in its place. Oh, so oh mise- sounds like fucking off. It sounds like BDSM. So mise en place would be like, um, you never, you never free carry uh, silverware to, through the restaurant. So like, say you were eating, you're like, oh, can I grab a fork? I wouldn't just go grab a fork with my hand and bring it over and give it to you. I well, would have it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Face. It's a plastic <laughs> one. <laughs> Ignite your fucking personal fork, Foley. I got half a chopstick. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. No, we would have a plate where you have forks, knives, and spoons, and they're like set up in a certain way so they don't fall off the plate. Okay. And you carry the plate over and, and, and you serve and you serve them like that. Pinkies up? Is that what do you think about that? I always I I I haven't doing it recently, but I always like put my little pinky up. No, I don't I don't know if that holds any water with anything. Are you serious? Pinkies up? What pinkies pinky? up? You don't know about that? That's no. the Queen of England. I, I swear I know I heard it from somewhere. The fancy when you drink tea, I, I'm pretty sure you. Sure, it sure. Up. Back back in the day, yes, your, your your pinky would be out. So now you do it as a way to show, as a nod to fine dining. Is that not correct? No, that's something that garbage people do to try to act rich. Are you serious? I make sure I keep my pinky up when I'm drinking my pounder. <laughs> Wait, for real? Because I've been putting pinkies up. Mm. Mm-mm. No pinkies. Unless you have some kind of ligament damage, I'd lose the pinky up thing. Yeah. Are you fucking... I wouldn't even know how to put my pinky down. But people are going to think you're psycho. I've always put a pinky up. I don't know. That's weird. Anything with pinkies, I think, is weird. I guess... The, no pinky yeah, in look the at butt. <laughs> I thought, no, men love having pinkies in the butt. Everybody knows. That's <laughs> a little, the, little pinky? Everyone loves... A, it's either a pinky or a thumb, but men love that. <laughs> it's, either, it's either a pinky or a toe. I'm not sure. I can't remember. You've heard about that though. That's because your orgasm glands are in your butt. Of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. The prostrate. Yeah, you prostrate. The prostrate. You got, you got orgasm glands in your butt. <laughs> okay, so if I'm, if I'm so chilled, start from the inside out, and then this is what the one question I had too. Okay, how big of a no-no is it to use bread as a fork? I mean, use bread as a knife. You know, when people not the cutting but the shoveling. I'm a big fan of that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. I know exactly what you're talking about. Because that, listen, at heart, I want everything mixed together. I want all the flavors to be mixed together. Like yeah. my favorite, my favorite part of ramen is the is the last couple of slurps because all those oh little God. bits, all oh, those little you bits. Cried. Oh, all those this little. Is why bits I was and- so excited last night just for some for someone to say something like that. <laughs> my favorite part of ramen is the last couple slurps. Oh, oh man, everything's mixed together. If they could just sell that. Oh, just the slurps. That's what they could call it. Just the slurps. <laughs> Please, Lord. The last couple of slurps. But no, I know what you're saying. But technically, I think in fine dining, the roll, the any bread would have been already cleared off the table. <gasps> everything, everything should be cleared off from course to course, and nothing should be left over. Ugh, fuck, man. I don't know what, if I have it in me. What are you? What are you, Meghan Merkel? What are you going into here? You, well, basically, it's come up a few times because it, it, people have been like, you've got, I mean, I guess me jumping to fine dining is me skipping a few steps. Mm-hmm. Because right now, the thing is, is I'll eat with my hands. I won't eat sitting down. Um, basically, I'm a total fucking slob. And I don't even know where to begin. Like, I don't know where to begin to start to have better manners. Well, I think that's okay. I think the only time you have to put on that front is like, if you're having like a, a business dinner meeting or something like that. But with what we do, you know, the crazier you are with the better. So here's the thing. So some, so I was on a date a while back and I think we've I been eat in a spaghetti couple- with my fingers. So what? <laughs> back off, bitch. I'm starving. <laughs> it was, I think we'd been in a, enough dates that I wasn't on my best, best behavior, but it was still maybe three dates in. And I did something where we were, everything's going good laughing. And I think I put, I moved something on her plate with my hand or I did something on my plate with my hand. And all of a sudden she stopped and went, whoa, why would you do that? And then I realized like, oh, fuck. And then she was like, I can't believe you just did that. Like she was shocked and mortified. And then she said, you know what your problem is? I'm like, fuck, how do we get here already? And she said, you got, you comedians, she goes, you guys all eat to get alone all the time. And then you're eating together like a bunch of slobs because there's no rules in what you do. So you're not holding each other accountable. And I was like, I was like, you're right. I'm going to change my ways. And then I pretended to change for like five days or something. But so it is. And what we do, we can literally eat however we want. 
Mm -hmm. But what do you, how do you eat when you're with your girl? Um, she laughs it off most of the times, but mm. like, yeah, I mean, I, there's, there's 99.9% .9 chance that I'm going to be walking away from that table with some sort of stain on my shirt. Absolutely. Something, Something. some T some t-shirts getting ruined. And if I have a real fancy shirt on that, like she bought me or something, I do the, I, I do the napkin. Really? <laughs> That's a real garbage, man. That's <laughs> carry my own lobster bibs around even when I'm eating cereal. Wait, you, you, you don't bring it to a restaurant though, do you? No, I'm just saying like, if, I'll, if, if I'm worried about getting something on my shirt, I'll take the napkin at the restaurant and, right. and tuck it, tuck it in. Wow. Up yeah, it's a real fat guy move. Wow, wow. But no. We're usually pretty good with that stuff, but it's, it's, you know, when you, when you get to this point in the relationship, it's a free for all. And that's what yeah, the best knows. part is. That's what the best part is. The, the, one of my favorite thing to do is to go out with her, have a couple of drinks, share, and we share everything. So we're sharing the appetizer. We're, we're, we're quarterbacking. All right, you get this and I'll get this and we'll share them both. So I'm there's so a happy lot of, for you. You're in a there's good a lot of that going on. Yeah, that's a good relate. And Foley's girlfriend has a great sense of humor too, because you guys met also working at a comedy club, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good, that to me, that's, that's, that's half, that's really a, that's for some reason, that's a sign of a good, you got a good thing going. Right. But some people are really worried about, you know, sharing food and no matter how close they are, you know? I so mean, maybe... to me, that was, to me, that would seem like they maybe are not sexually adventurous. I use food as a symbol in some ways for like sexual open mindedness. So mm -hmm. if I was on a date and someone was like, I don't share food, I'd be like, okay, either, She's into like some kind of S and M stuff, and or she's really closed minded. I want mm -hmm. someone that shares fucking everything and is down for whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How am I supposed to get that tongue in the butt if she won't give me a bite of her pizza? What's <laughs> the deal here? Let's make a move. That's me before every fucking day. It's <laughs> funny. Well, I want to have you back on when I can ask you more questions about like life stuff and your singing. But in the meantime, I'm gonna marinate about some of this. I'm going to marinate about some etiquette stuff. And the as, main far, thing as far as etiquette, when you go to a restaurant, you keep your elbows off the table. You know, you keep your, uh, I read in the blog that you can actually have your elbows on the table. If you're, if you're done eating, if you're done eating. Yeah. If everything's okay. been cleared off the table. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Where can people find you during the quarantine? Cause you're doing a podcast now and, and Foley's doing, what's it called? Your updates. I know fat guys in it, but I want don't oh, want to say fat it wrong. guy rants. Fat guy rants. All right. Yeah, oh, I've God. done a couple. I've done a couple of fat guy rants, but they're slowing down because I'm trying to stay the fuck away from everybody. So right. it's like, what am I going to do them in, in in the kitchen? Please. But uh, Kevin and Ryan and I are doing daily podcasts. Of Kevin the Ryan, one guy, one guy, funny comedian of the Hard Feelings podcast. That's our that's our podcast, and we started a new podcast a few months ago called Are You Garbage? Which you guys is are a doing really two podcasts. Uh, we're doing two podcasts. We're doing hard feelings every single day during the quarantine. Wow. And we do two Are You Garbages a week. And I am sure you'll be on Are You Garbage very soon. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, Are You Garbage sounds right up my it's alley. It's fun. So what we do is we bring on everybody's favorite comedians and we just ask them a series of questions about growing up, about, you know, the kind of like what we're talking about now. Yep. Well, you know, like, uh, you know, did you, did you have carpet in the bathroom when you were a kid? Did you ever travel across state lines to specifically buy fireworks? Oh, have my you, God. I'm getting to, I remember you talking about this. Yeah. I have remember you ever had you, turkey on any other day but Thanksgiving? If you have, you're fucking garbage. Oh, shit. I remember yeah. you talking about this. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that's awesome. going really good. So we're doing that every single day. You could find both of those on any uh podcast platform you can find me on twitter at h foley on ice and on instagram tweeter? at foley grams i'm starting to be i mean i've really shifted focus you know once once this all kind of went south i knew i couldn't just sit and you know just wait this out so right. and i've i was never really big on social media before like when i say big i mean i'm terrible at it i don't i don't even know what a good tweet is but i've been just trying to be more engaged and post more on both both platforms just to keep you know everything moving i don't know what a good tweet is either i don't that i don't get it i don't get it i don't get, I don't it. get it and i see somebody that has somebody puts out like a killer tweet that has like 40 billion retweets and, and 12 billion likes and then you look at their page and it didn't get them like four followers i was wondering about that because i've seen viral tweets and then other people take the tweet and post it but then yeah it's just they don't have I don't know. It's very, or people take other people. I have a friend who doesn't have a big following, but 
it's kind of interesting. All these um, women, like in, women influencers, will take his tweets. Who? He's a straight guy. It's my buddy Justin. He's really funny on Twitter. But he he started saying, I think that some influencers are taking my tweets, and I was like, it's probably parallel thinking. And then he showed me, and it'll be like he'll post it at like six a.m. Yeah. And then they'll by eleven a.m. And this has happened a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. They'll have a, pretty much the same thing with a few words changed. Yeah, those influencers are pretty pretty scummy. Yeah. Pretty scummy. I mean, I just I'm just I'm just biding my time until we uh, we get back to normal here. Like I had a movie that was going to be at the Tribeca Film Festival, and then that got fucking canceled. Fuck. Yeah. Can they still put it out some other I'm sure way? they, I think they're going to, they'll postpone the festival and probably do it in the fall or something like that and it'll all work out. But like, we were like right there, you know? So, yeah, I just kind of shifted, shifted my focus just to more online stuff than, you know, because we can't go out and do anything. So and that's I where cut we're you at. Off. What did you say your Instagram was? Uh, Foleygrams. Foleygrams. Inst- Instagram okay. is Foleygrams and Twitter is at H Foley on ice. On ice. Yeah. I dig it. All right, thank you, Foley. Okay, that was my talk with Henry Foley. Funny guy. Um, I don't really know if I'm going to be changing manners stuff around, but I just wanted to share a little bit of that exploration process with you guys. So in the last one, I mentioned that I was going to get into stuff about sugar. I'll do that on the next one. But on the last, just solo episode, I mentioned I wanted to do a deep dive into Danity Kane. And did that desire change? Fucking no. Fucking no. Do you guys remember Danity Kane? Danity Kane was from Diddy's Making a Band. And I used to listen to this song they had damaged. Do you know so <laughs> Damaged. I listened to that song so many times. My roommate at the time asked me if it was sexual. She goes, um, not to be weird, but like you listen to that on repeat so many times. I didn't know if it was like a sexual thing. And yeah, it was. No, I just love that song. I love that song. I love a catchy you know, I loved Danity Kane. I actually found out when I was Googling about Danity Kane because it's very vague out there. No, it's uh, something's being covered up by someone. Someone signed a non-disclosure or something because you can't get the full story. All right? Someone silenced those women. One of the girls, Dawn, is out, was out a little bit. But, I mean, they, I mean, they, 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 we can all compare notes, but I'll tell you guys what I found. But making the band supposedly is coming back with Diddy's kids. Go fuck yourself, Diddy's kids. How about that for a hot take? How about have have the sensitivity that you're going to be judging people on whether or not they can make the band when the only thing you ever got was because you you made it as semen into the egg and then <laughs> popped out just luckily as Diddy's kids, right? Could you, um, I mean, that's that's literally like, this, a famous figure skater's kid judging people that have given every single thing on whether or not they can be figure skaters. Like, you want it to, like, at least with, like, America's Got Talent or shows like this, these people have some background in it. This is his fucking kid sitting there like, no, you, no, no, you don't make the band. Oh. Oh, and you do? Yeah, you do. Fuck face. I mean, I follow both those motherfuckers on Instagram, and you know if they want to hang out. I don't even know. I don't even know. Have this self-awareness. My dad's a math teacher. If he was like, Emma, I think you'd be a great math teacher. Come in and teach a class. I'd be like, you're losing your mind. That's belittling to the students. Also, how much does it pay? But yeah, fucking his kids. I don't know if that's actually going to happen because the article about that came out a little, maybe a year ago. Making the band reboot announces Diddy's sons eh, as judges. Eh, cast and call dates. I hope everyone showed up like, fuck you. But anyway, I get it. So, Danity Kane, you guys remember, they're part of it. Diddy's making the band, all right? And I can't figure out if they got paid for that. I don't know, because sometimes those reality show things, they don't pay. I don't know. But they were opening up for a while. They had their hits, and then they were opening up for the Pussycat Dolls and Christina Aguilera. Wouldn't that have been a fun show? Wouldn't that have been a fun show? Lots of initial success, you know? And then Diddy removed members. He removed... Dawn and Woodget from the group. Those are the last names, obviously. And then there were three remaining members that carried on all their previously scheduled promotional events, but the group officially, officially ended in 2009. All the articles I read said they, they disbanded in 2009. Why do people use words in articles that you would never use? How, what happened with the relationship? Well, we disbanded. What? Why are you trying so hard to, to sound smart? Now you sound like a fucking idiot. They got released 
from their contract with Bad Boy later that year, later in 2009. Now, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone, so you know it's hearsay. And they were in a recording studio, and they said that Diddy had blackballed. I don't know. Is that the right word? Blackballed? I know there's blue ball. Uh, Diddy had shunned people from working with the Danity King girls because she said she was in the recording studio, and, um, and Dawn walked in. And the person was like, told her to kick rocks. And it was because like, you don't want to do something that that was not based on, you know, Diddy co-signing it. He doesn't write rhymes, he writes checks. That, you know what I'm saying? It's tough biz out there. It is. Diddy is an interesting guy. I'm so curious what he's like sexually. I really am. I've heard things. Heard things. About, I've heard swinging things. He's a swinger. I heard that he fucks a bunch of people. I swear on everything I heard that. If you asked me in an interrogation and could I back it up, no. And I wouldn't give names. The person that told me knows all these people, too. But this is not how you do reporting. I know that because uh, because this is how you get in trouble. But Because someone will say, how do you know that? I say, someone told me. And they go, who told you? And then pff, let's hope the fuck I wouldn't snitch. They said, yeah, Diddy, Diddy was fucking Mace. And Mace was not into it. Trying to fuck Shane. Shane not into it, you know, they're like, he, it's not that he's gay, they're like, it's not gay, it's that he's just achieved everything, and he just wants to party, this was like six years ago, someone told me this, and then that same person also said Buster Rhymes was gay, and I went, what, if Buster Rhymes is gay, you know he's fucking, the, if he's a top, he is fucking, god, that you, no one can handle that, no one can handle that, that energy on that ass, no one can handle that, so here's the final assessment with Danny Decay. I seriously couldn't find enough info, which makes me think there's a cover-up. There's a cover-up. What do you guys know? Okay? I, I've, there's some kind of cover-up going on. Obviously, there was, like, some, like, drama and problems with Diddy, and I'm sure the record contract was all fucked up, but there's something. And then they're touched upon. Lou Pearlman has a documentary. I remember. I'm pretty sure that they're touched upon in that. Don't quote me on that. You know, how degrading is that, though, that Sean's, Diddy's sons are ju- are going to be judges? Go fuck yourself. I mean, maybe be on it. Maybe be like, let me be a producer. You know, you can, nepotism or having a parent work on something, yeah, get yourself into it, get your paycheck, do what you need to do, but to have the audacity to think that you can judge people that are building something from nothing to try to audition, that's just, that's cruel and unusual punishment, honestly. There is a quote from one of his kids. We not settling for just anybody. Brown added in the clip, if you feel like you got what it takes to compete in today's industry, you mean having your parent be Puff Daddy? No, just you two have that and your other siblings. If you feel you got what it takes to compete in today's industry, y'all know how our pops does it. Yeah, we do. We know how he puts his kids in positions they shouldn't necessarily be in. So expect nothing but the best to be showing up. (laughs) I'd watch a porn of that show tanking. That would be a porn for me. Someone would say, uh, uh, um, um, uh, the show sucks, and that's what the porn would be. Okay, my video camera just went off. Great. But the audio's still recording, so now you're just getting the end of it. Uh, maybe we'll just do it where there's, like, a picture of me, because I can see the audio still recording. Technology is hard. All right, whatever. That was the end of the episode anyway. That was my friend H. Foley. Tune in. Make sure you like and subscribe, you know, on iTunes, on YouTube. I'm trying. You know, I want, I've been listening to other people do interviews. I want to get better at it. Who knows? But, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. One day at a time, one foot in front of the other. Be as healthy as you can be. Love yourself in every way you can. We're all lucky to be here. It is what it is. You know, what if we all just accepted each ourselves exactly how we are right now? What would happen? How, how weird would that be? If we weren't like, I want this and I want that. And we're just like, I am how I am and I accept that. Or I guess you can accept that and still not be happy with it. Like, I am how I am. Fuck. But let's just, you know, just take a moment. And I hope I distracted you for an hour, hour and a half, whatever. Yeah. If you want me to keep doing this podcast after we're we're let out of Corona, let me know. Emmasbunker at gmail.com. But if you really want to let me know, like, subscribe, give me a little comment. Oh, Emma.